Okay, so today we will talk about uh, inductance and inductance. So in chapter 25 and 26, we have already introduced two of the fundamental uh, circuit elements uh, and yeah, actually the linear uh, circuit element known as the resistor and capacitor. And here we talk about the inductor. So for the capacitor, we have uh, introduced it in chapter 25 and for the resistor we have introduced it in chapter 26 so in this chapter we will introduce the inductor so yeah so actually when you consider circuit theory resistor is the most easiest one because uh, it don't have any memory it is as simple as B equals I R. so the uh, potential difference across the resistor only depends on the current at that moment and for capacitor and inductor it might be more difficult more difficult because it involves some uh, derivative some derivative for the capacitor if you still remember <laughs> I'm not sure <laughs> yeah it has a it has a formula like I equals CDVDT I'm not uh, CDVDT. I'm not sure whether I have introduced it in this class, <laughs> but actually, you really need this for the uh, coming two chapters to really write out some differential equation and try to solve it. Yeah. So uh, for the capacitor, it has a uh, equation like this: I the capac uh, the in uh, the current going through a capacitor is the uh, uh, potential difference across that resistor. So it is something like uh, this is a capacitor C and then the voltage difference or the potential difference across the capacitor. For example, this one is higher than this one and we denote it as V and then the current going through it is I. So these three variable will satisfy this equation rather than uh, V equals I out. Uh, yeah, the V only depends on I at that moment, but here I really depends on V in the previous moment and, and this moment. So this is the derivative. So the, for the derivative, it really means that a dV dt is something like uh, a t. So it is something like limit of vt plus delta t uh, minus vt over delta t. And then delta t tends to zero. So this is the definition of the derivative. So it depends on on the uh, uh, potential difference changing uh, recently. And for the inductor, uh, it has an other, it has an other equation like uh, a V equals L D I D T, uh, something like this. Probably you still need to <laughs> remember it. But yeah, I will, in, I will introduce this uh, a bit later. Okay, so for, it says here, uh, an inductor is, an, uh, is a device that can be used to produce a known magnetic field in a specific region. So if a current I is established through each of the line, uh, each of the end windings, uh, end trend uh, of an inductor. So a magnetic flux phi B links those winding. The inductance L of the inductor is something like this, something like this. So if you still remember the definition of the capacitor is like uh, C equals Q over V or Q equals C V, something like that. So here this is the definition of the of the inductor. Of the inductor. So the inductance of an inductor L is like phi B. Phi B is the magnetic thrust going through one wind, uh, one wind. And we suppose we have N windings for the inductor. So it's something like uh, we have we have N, N windings for an inductor and then yeah so this is the total total uh, magnetic flux magnetic flux density and then divided by the current because you know if we increase I phi B will also increase so this L doesn't rely on the on the current the current is like the output so this is a this is an inductor. So 
when we try to uh, input some some current here, then the current will go through and it will generate magnetic field or B field, and of course there will be magnetic flux generated. And here, this L doesn't really depends on this I because yeah the magnetic flux is proportional to the I, so yeah so finally the I will cancel, and then this ratio is so called the inductance of an inductor. Okay, so here SI unit of an inductance is called Henry, Henry, Henry. Okay, so you need to slightly remember. For the R, the SI unit is ohm, so this is a Greek letter, omega, a capital omega. And then for the capacitor, the SI unit is farad, farad. So coulomb is, is the SI unit for the charge, charge amount is coulomb. But for the capacitor, this is capacitor, the SI unit is farad. Hope you still remember. <laughs> And for the inductor, the SI unit is Henry. And of course the SI unit for for the B field is Tesla and SI unit for 5B is Weber. So there are quite a lot of different SI units here. Okay, but for engineering students, SI unit is very important, not only for uh, electromagnetic, uh, but also for other, other uh, fields. Okay, so here's an interesting story. So it says the crude inductor with uh, which uh, Michael Faraday discovered the law of induction. Uh, so with which Michael Faraday uh, discovered the law of induction. So of course, the law is called the Faraday's law. So here it says, uh, this is Michael Faraday who, who uh, discover the law of induction, but here you see, uh, this is not named after him. Uh, rather than that, the capacitor, the SI unit of the capacitor is named after him. Farad is, yeah, you can see, this is the the first part of Faraday. So you can see Farad here. Okay, so in those days, uh, amenities such as insulated wire were not commercialized available. So, uh, okay, so, so, so at that time, those uh, insulated wire were not commercially available. It is said that Faraday insulate his wire by wrapping them with strip cuts from his wife's petticoats. So he cut his wife's petticoats, and then he cut his So this is an interesting story. So, yeah, so this is, uh, yeah, you can find it in the Royal Institute uh, Bridgman Art Library in New York. Okay, so yeah, so of course this is the uh, original definition of the of the inductance. So here we can see that n phi b n phi b is actually n times l. So you should be very careful about uh, what is capital n, what is small n. So for capital n, it is a total winding. Cap, uh, capital N is total winding. So here you can see N windings. And capital N means total winding. And for small n, um, small n uh, is the uh, number of turn per unit length, just as what we have introduced in chapter 29 when, when we introduced the solenoid. So we have uh, B equals mu zero I N if you still remember in the previous chapter. So this n is also the number of turn per unit length, like the density. Small n means the density of the, of the winding. And top, capital N means the total windings. Okay, so this, this n, this, ah, oh, sorry. This n really means small n times the total length. So the, this is the 
um, total number of uh, number of turn per unit length times the length will be the total number of uh, uh, turns, and then phi b will be b times a for a single single turn. Okay, so we have n phi b equals n l b a, and then yeah, so <laughs> just as what I wrote, b equals mu zero i n. So this is the B view for a solenoid. Of course, this is an approximate um, uh, equation, but yeah, we use it here. So we can just plug in this one into there. So you can see L equals N phi B over I is the definition. And then N phi B equals this one. So we put it here. And then finally, B equals this term. So we put these terms here. So we have N L mu zero I N capital A over I. And then you can see that I and I can be cancelled. I and I can be cancelled. So we all together have n square, n square a, and then also mu zero. We put this l over. So we have capital L over small l. So this is this is inductance. This is the length of the inductor. Okay, equals mu zero n square a. So we know that mu zero is a constant. Is the permeability constant 4 pi times 10 to minus 7 and then n square is the uh, turn density uh, and then square and then this is the cross-section area of the inductor so which means that if we would like to make this um, inductance per unit length larger we need to either increase increase the cross-section area the cross-section area means if we have if we have an inductor like this so this part is the cross-section area so we should make it larger then the inductance will be larger and all uh, or the other way is to increase the number of turn per unit length the number of turn per unit length so for a for every meter we try to put more turns in in a unit length, then you can increase the inductance per, per unit length. So there are two ways to increase the inductor. So when we really need some large inductor, uh, then yeah, then its volume will be large because we need large area, or maybe uh, we need to increase the length of the inductor. Okay, so here is a phenomenon called the self self-induction in Chinese it is called zi, zi gan yin. okay so if two coils which were uh, which we can now call inductors are near each other a current I in one coil produce a magnetic flux phi B through the second coil so let us try to uh, see this uh, CT circuit diagram. So of course on the left side is a battery or you can regard it as a EMF. Okay, so here is a resistor. It's a resistor, but the line is not connect from here. Rather than that we have a we have a node here and then we have a pointer point to this side, which means that it is a tunable resistor. This is a tunable uh, resistor. Resistor, tunable resistor, which means that if we would try to move this tube to the right side, then the current should go through the whole resistor, which means that the resistor will be larger. If you still remember, R should be rho times L over A. So in this case, for the, in, uh, for the tunable resistor, if we try to move this tube to a different position, A doesn't change. The only thing, the only variable changes is the, the length. If we move to the right side, like uh, here, then the L counts for the whole resistor. If we move to the left side, then L counts nothing. And of course the tip can be in between, somewhere in between. Okay, so, uh, yeah, according to this one, it is linearly to the to the length. So we can try to move this tube to tune this resistor. 
And if we try to tune this resistor, the resistor for the whole loop is changing. So we can actually uh, control the the current of the circuit. Okay. So so which means that uh, this part try to uh, generate a current going through the the inductor. Okay. So here we have an inductor. So let's see what it said. Okay, we have seen that if we change this plus by changing the current. So the point here is that we, we can try to change the current. Because for the Faraday's law, it, it said that uh, it is something like uh, E dot ds equals negative d phi b dt. So which means that if we don't really change the magnetic first, there won't be any EDS or we can write it as the induced EMF. So so it means that we really need to change the magnetic first. So we have some degree of freedom to yeah, change the resistance so that we can change the current going through the loop. But of course it is not as simple as a E E equals I R not as simple as that later you you know why i and i actually hope you can you can really understand because it's a bit more complicated it's related to the differential equation but yeah but here is that we've seen that uh, if we change this flux by changing the current and induce emf appear in the second coil it means that for example for the first loop for the first loop uh, don't try to ignore the, the other first. So if we have the first loop and then there are some current going through it, according to what we have learned in chapter 29, this loop will generate B fuel, right? At least at this point, at the center point, you know what it is. It should be something like uh, B equals uh, mu zero I over two R, no pi, no pi pi is this is the current and then you generate the b view here generate the b view here it should be mu zero i over two pi r so this is this is for for a long string wire but for a circular wire uh, the b view is mu zero i over two pi uh, two r if i remember correctly yeah. okay. if you don't remember try to check it back on chapter 29 at the beginning when we talk about the bills of a law okay so 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 now i hope you understand oh this loop will generate b view at uh, this here so which means that this b view will go through the other coil will go through the other coil so actually for ex for instance for the second coil there will be some external b view going through this turn and suppose this B view is changing, then there will be some magnetic flux. Uh, that there will be, there will, there's of course some magnetic flux changing for this coil, for the second coil. And according to uh, Faraday's law, which means the the law of induction, it will generate the EMF. And you can consider the EMF generate uh, is something like. Oh, what is the direction of the induced EMF? So yeah, so you can imagine at the very beginning we won't have any. For example, uh, we just try to maybe reopen it or make, or try to make the resistance to be larger so the current is smallest. So in that case, B is the smallest value, and then we try to reduce the resistor, and then the current will increase. In this sense. The magnetic flux pointing downward is increasing. So the magnetic flux for the second coil is increasing, pointing downward. According to the Lenz law, the B induced, B induced should be pointing upward. If you really, uh, if you still understand or what is the Lenz law and also the Faraday's law, so B induced should be pointing this way. And of course, the E, uh, the induced current should be the other way round huh. the other way round from the original i from the original i so it if you if you realize that there are some uh voltage drop over this inductor if you like there are some voltage drop because yeah emf 
the EMF is pointing is pointing this way. The induced EMF. So it's the other way around from the battery. Okay. So this is the this is the phenomenon. So yeah, so it says uh, by changing the current and induced EMF RP in the second coil according to Faraday's law. And induced EMF appears in the first coil as well. This process is called self-induction. And the EMF that appears is called the self-induced EMF. It obeys the very law of uh, induction just as other induced EMF do. So actually just this is so this is just uh, what I have explained there. Okay, so yeah. So just now I just uh, mentioned the phenomenon. So here we try to uh, uh, use some formula to 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 describe this thing. So yeah, actually this is the original definition. The original definition is L equals n phi b over i. So we ju just put this i over. So we have n phi b equals L i, and then according to Faraday's law, the or the very beginning one, so we have uh, EL equals negative N. So sometimes we don't have this N because sometimes we, we just have one turn. So N is only one, but here we will suppose that uh, there are multiple turns. So we just put N phi B to be a whole term. So we take the derivative of N divided uh, N phi B uh, with respect to time and then take the minus sign. So this is the simple form of simpler form of the Faraday's law and then we try to put this Li into here because N phi B is nothing but Li so we have uh, D Li dt and L is uh, constant to time so we can just put L out so finally we have El equals negative L di dt okay so actually this equation is written by some physician <laughs> Yeah, of course this is a physics textbook, and usually, um, yeah, actually I'm I'm from ECE, from ECE or electrical engineering. Um, yeah, so in circuit theory, I seldom use this expression. Rather than that, I will write it as V equals L D I D T instead. So honestly, before I teach this physics course, I I seldom use this. EMF, we, we will try to use uh, voltage difference instead of EMF. But between EMF and, and the voltage difference, there are negative side difference. So we have a V equals L D I D T rather than rather than that one. So it feels like that this is, uh, just say this is VL, VL. So there will be a voltage drop over this uh, over this inductor. So when we try to try to use this equation, so be careful that is that you need to care about the direction. So suppose this is the I, this is the I going through the inductor L, and then this is V L. The plus means this one is higher than that one, uh, higher than that one, or at least how you define the direction of the which one subtracted uh, another one okay so this is how we how we determine the direction so the the current is from top to bottom and then we are also from top to bottom which means that the electric potential of this point subtracted by this point is vl okay so this is how we try to use this uh, equation at least later in, in the coming two chapter. And similarly for the capacitor, if this is C, this is VC, this is I. So uh, I equals C D V C D T should be like the current is also from top to bottom. And then VC also the the top node subtract with the bottom node is VC. Okay. So this is how we should determine the, the direction of, of the variable in these two equations. Okay, so just keep it in mind, we, we will use it later.
Okay, so the later is, is now. <laughs> yeah, so here we will talk about the RL circuit, but yeah, actually I tried, maybe, maybe I will try to let you know why the equation is like this. Because in the textbook, it doesn't really tell you why, why the equation like this. But if you have learned uh, how to solve first order ODE, you should, you should know. Or maybe some of you are ECE students, uh, you should have learned the circuit analysis. So you, you should all also know. Uh, yeah, so actually it relates to the, it relates to the uh, uh, differential equation. Uh, actually, I will I will teach you after this chapter. <laughs> I will teach you after this chapter, and also in chapter twenty seven, tra chapter thirty one, I will try to teach you uh, when you look at this, when you look at this circuit, how can we write a differential equation uh, describing this circuit. So I just uh, so so at this moment, you just try to believe uh, what it is. The the answer is like this. And then after finishing next chapter, I will go back to here and then tell you uh, how we can derive the solution like this. Okay, so let so now you try to believe this is correct. And then what does it mean? So here we have a circuit, we have the battery, we have a re, uh, we have a resistor, series with an inductor. So these three elements are in series. Okay, so at the very beginning. At the very beginning, we just try to uh, okay. So you you should you should uh, think it as we have a switch there, although it does not why right here. So at the very beginning, there is a switch open. So there is no current going through this this circuit. So in that in that case, you can imagine there is something called the initial condition, I. Uh, zero negative is zero A. There is no current going through this circuit. So if you try to plug in T equals zero, T equals zero, which means exponential to zero is one, exponential to zero is one. So one minus one is zero. So I, I zero, I zero is, is zero. So there is no current at the very beginning. And then at T equals zero, uh, we try to switch on the circuit, so so the current will start to increase. The current does not increase to the steady steady state immediately. It starts to increase gradually. Something like not yeah yeah. You can you can imagine this is V out. This is VR, which means VR is the voltage across this resistor. So this resistor should satisfy VR equals I times R, I times R. So VR equals I R, which means that I equals E over R, and then this one. So it means that VR should be something like I when we plug in here, R and R will cancel each other. So it should be expo uh, E times 1 minus exponential to negative T over tau L. Tau L here we call it the inductive time constant, which is L over R. It determines how fast uh, how fast this curve will, will settle. So suppose when T equals 1, when, uh, sorry, it, uh, it means when T equals tau L, so this one will become exponential to negative one, which is something like exponential to negative one is something like zero point three six a if I remember correctly. Remember correctly. So one minus zero point three six a should be something like uh, somewhere like here. So if tau l is larger, which means that this point will move to that side and then the curve will, will be something something like this. So it's still an exponential decay, exponential settling. If tau L is smaller, it will become something something like this. So this one is tau L to be smaller. This one is something like tau L to be larger. Okay, something like that. 
Yeah. So here for this one, tau L is around two millisecond, two millisecond. So it just try to pick some value of L and R so that the tau L is two millisecond and the curve will be like this. Okay, so here is VL. VL is the voltage across across this one. So which means that this is E, this is VR, this is VL. So we should have a we should have a, a so called KVL like E equals VR uh, plus VL. Okay, so VL equals E minus VR. E minus VR will be nothing but so this one uh, so we, we can have VL equals uh, exponential times ex uh, uh, sorry E times exponential to negative T over tau L something like this so we have we have the E starting from 10 volt e, this E is 10 volt so it starts to decay, decay to zero. So when t tends to infinity, exponential, uh, exponential to negative infinity is zero. So this is so-called a steady state, steady state one time. Steady uh, s, steady state, steady state, uh, state. Uh, in Chinese it's called one time. So which means long time later, then yeah, then it is so called a steady state. And engin in engineering sense, uh, we will suppose that when t is larger than five times the tau l, we can assume that uh, this value is sufficiently small, although it is not perfectly zero, but. Yeah, at least it is already something like less than 0 0.01. So in engineering sense, when T is larger than five times of the time constant, then we will regard it, uh, reach the steady state. Okay, so so far we have some strange equation. Like this one, this is the current. This is the current. Okay, this is not a constant current. It is actually changing it is actually changing so so you can also regard oh, this is i this is i in a of course the y-axis is uh, has different value uh, yeah. but actually the same is the, the shape of the current and vr should be the same because yeah it satisfies the ohm's law and then we also have this one uh, I'll tell you how to derive this later, so just believe it at this moment. <laughs> okay, so here we have a sample problem. It says, uh, if uh, the figure A shows a circuit that contains three identical resistor, so this one, one, two, three are three identical resistor, with resistance R equals 9 ohm, two identical inductor with Inductance L equals two milli Henry. So this resistance, uh, this this is inductance and this inductor are uh, all L equals two milli Henry. And an ideal battery with EMF E equals eighteen volt. What is the current I through the battery just after the switch is closed? Just uh, yeah. So yeah. So here we have a concept. It's like um the so this is out of this sample problem you should you should remember this concept okay so the concept is like the voltage the voltage difference the voltage difference of any uh, of a capacitor of a capacitor is is continuous Okay, and then the current, the current of an inductor is also continuous, it's also continuous, but the current, the current for a capacitor is not continuous. Okay, so the 
the current, the current of a capacitor is not continuous. And here, the voltage difference, the voltage difference of an inductor is not is not continuous. Okay, so yeah, so so now you may be confused. What does it mean? You can try to see. Uh, here. Okay, as you can see here, uh, we have we have I equals C D V D T for the capacitor. So you can simply imagine that this V should be continuous. Otherwise, we cannot find the derivative. If it is not the uh, if it is not continuous, the derivative should be infinite at that point. So when you look at this equation, you can have a concept that uh, the voltage difference across the capacitor is continuous, but I does not necessary to be continuous, which means that the voltage can be something, something like this. For example, V is something like this. So the current, the current is changing uh, without the continuous condition. Here, you can also see that for the current of the inductor, we need to take the derivative. So I should be continuous for the inductor, but not the uh, voltage difference across the inductor. Okay. So if we have this concept, so at the very beginning, this which is open, this which is open, this which is open, which means that this is not connected. So there won't be any current going through the inductor, which means that uh, I, zero negative, should be zero. Uh, for example, this is I, or this I L, I L, this is also I L. So I L zero minus is negative, because at the very beginning, this, this which is open, so there won't, there can't be any current going through. I should be zero when T is smaller than zero. So as much as there are no, there are no current, uh, inside this circuit, there shouldn't be any other current. There shouldn't be any other current. Okay, so, so here we know that the current of an inductor is continuous. So we apply this knowledge, we can see that I L zero plus is also zero. It's also zero. Even though the switch is close at T equals zero. Zero second. Okay. So at the very beginning, I L I L zero plus is zero. I L zero plus is zero. So the only current can go through is through the middle part, uh, middle path. So it says what is the current I through the battery just after? Just after means T equals to uh, zero plus second. Okay, uh, just after the switch is closed. So here it means that uh, this path, for this path, for this path, we don't have any current at T equals zero plus. So it is just like this is open. And also for this part, because we have this inductor here, I L zero plus is also zero. So we don't and we don't have any current going through this part either. The only the only path the current can go is from the middle path. So E uh, sorry, I mean I it asks you I. I for the middle path should be uh, should be uh, E over a single R because this is open this is open so you can just just ignore them just ignore them the current is as simple as this is a current uh, this is a battery this is a resistor something like this so I equals E over R which is 18 over um, 9 which is 2 A
okay, if you are easy, easy student, uh, when you have, if you have learned circuit analysis, it, it should be very trivial. But if you are not, if you are civil engineering student, it might be, uh, it might be, uh, yeah, it might be difficult for you. Okay, so for part B, what is the current I through the battery long after the switch has been closed? Switch has been closed. So when, when, um, when T tends to infinity, when T tends to infinity, okay, the, the current, the current, uh, yeah, the current will be maximized. The current will be maximized. And in that sense, uh, there won't be any voltage change. Uh, there won't be any current change, I mean. So because here we have a V, L equals I, uh, sorry, L D I D T. L D I D T. And as you know, when I, uh, when T tends to infinity, I mean, when T tends to infinity, D I D T should be zero because it already settled. So D I D T is zero. So there won't be any, there won't be any voltage difference across an inverter when T tends to infinity, which means in the steady state. So when, when, T tends to infinity. The inductor is like is like a short circuit. So you can just assume it is nothing. Assume it's, it feel like a short circuit. It's like a short, short circuit. So when T tends to infinity, only ten, T tends to infinity. Uh, for another moment, it's not the case. So you can regard it as a short circuit. So you can just ignore this part. Also ignore this one. Also ignore this one. So if you guys, when T tends to infinity, the circuit is like E. We have E, and then we have one resistor, and other resistor, and then another resistor. So three resistor in parallel. We just regard this one is a short circuit, this inductor is a short circuit, this inductor is also a short circuit. So we only have three resistors in parallel. So for three resistors in parallel, the total equivalent, R equivalent is R over three uh, equals nine over three equals three ohm. If you don't believe, you can just try to use the equation like uh, uh, R equivalent equals 1 over 1 over R plus 1 over R plus 1 over R. So the denominator is 3 over R, and then take the reciprocal again, so it becomes R over 3. Okay, so this is R equivalent. And then the current, the current through the battery long after the, the switch has been closed. Mm. Yeah, so it asks you, this is the current uh, after the switch have been closed, have been closed. So this is uh, I, I equals E over R equivalent, which is uh, 18 over 3, which is 6A, which is 6A. And of course, if you would like to know what is the current, what is the current in between, zero and infinitely long away. We really need some uh, knowledge about how to write the uh, uh, differential equation describing the circuit and we will learn it later. Okay, so here let's try to have a